When Coach Brown became the new head coach of the Jack State Tigers football program, there's a lot of folks out there that, did, that didn't believe he was going to be there long. Many thought it was just going to be a short stay. He's going to be in and out. He's going to do just a little something for the program and, you know, bid his farewell goodbye and move on. Well, guess what, guys? We're now going into year two. And the talks of him possibly before going to another program was rampant. Now we got, hey, what if Jackson State was just to take the program and possibly become a part of the Big Ten? You see my facial expression, right? Let's get into it right after this. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's not positive vibes. We just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And also, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, Coach going to go ahead and get on in this thing and get straight to it. Because you already know when you're provoking change, you're going to have some folks come out of nowhere trying to detour you on that ride that you take it down that street where you know exactly where you're going. You got your map out right here. You already got everything marked off. So like, yeah, we're going to go here. Okay, two miles up, we need to make a left. And then after we make that left, we need to keep straight. We're going to be right on to where we need to go. Well, you always got that one person that's going to be sitting in the passenger seat next to you or in the back seat talking like, hey, hey, you need to make that turn there, right here. Turn right here. You ain't got to go down two more streets. Make that right here. Turn right here. And guess what? It takes you somewhere you really don't want to go. And a lot of times when people don't follow their first instinct, they end up in muddy waters where those muddy waters can be costly. And in this instance, the conversations that, you know, that's going on right now, and that, I mean, it's, it's been loud and clear, especially with the realignment of the Big Ten and you got the realignment of the SEC where they got two teams, I think it was Texas, the Texas and Oklahoma, I could be wrong, but I know that uh, Big Ten got USC and UCLA, which has really sparked a lot of conversation right now. Because, I mean, let's be honest here, everybody, if you haven't been paying close attention to everything that's going on, everything right now is about money. And if those media deals are not on point, guess what? You're going to end up seeing a lot of programs go up in smoke. And these schools ain't crazy. They're not about to let their programs go up in smoke, knowing daggone well Michigan just uh, locked a deal down, what, a couple years ago for, what, $2.64 billion? I mean, let's be real here. That's a media rights deal. We ain't even talking about the deal that they're trying to renegotiate right now where they have a third party that's going to be involved in that deal as far as with how their product is going to be streamed. But one thing our HBCU uh, folks got to understand is this. We got to get out there and daggone support our product. If we don't support our product, all of this conversation about, hey, do you think uh, uh, Jackson State should go to the Big Ten? Or do you think, you know, uh, uh, FAMU should go here? You know, FAMU go to the SEC? Or, you know, do you think that somebody else should go there? I mean, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. What I do see is I see people are beginning to understand exactly what the SWAC, as well as a lot of these other HBCU conferences, what they have their hands on here. And what they have their hands on here is something that's beautiful. The only thing is, it's just it's like that pearl. You got that pearl in your hand, and you got to shine that pearl up a little bit just for that bad boy to sparkle. And I think right now, that's what's going on, is that that pearl is being shined up. Now, where I'm going with this conversation is the fact that, yeah, you know, our good buddies over 247 Sports, Coach Reed, had some comments today as far as... Um, if by chance he could pick a team, uh, make sure I got this right, I think, uh, uh, pick a team to um, request membership to the Big Ten. He stated he would, hey, he'd tell Coach Prime, Coach Prime, listen to him. Hey, go on over there and apply for the Big Ten. But we already know, daggone well, that applying to the Big Ten is not in the cards for Jackson State or any HBCU right now, uh, for that matter, because the simple fact that there's a lot of different things that will be re required of those institutions in order for them to even be considered. And why I say this is because of the fact that one, all of those schools over the Big Ten, they roughly have anywhere from 30,000 and above when it comes to student head those count. institutions. So if by chance, and I'm sure uh, Jackson State is not close to 30,000. I'm for certain they're not close to 30,000. If they are, somebody please straighten me out on that. And I will gladly apologize for that statement, but I'm just saying I don't see 30,000 on Jackson State's campus. 
Now, will it happen? I believe it will. I believe they're on an uptick of getting those students that want to come to Jackson State, Mississippi, and become a part of something that's beautiful that they see as glaring from the outside and they won't in. And people got to understand, listen, you're going to have folks all the time talking about how Jackson, Jackson State can do this, you know, and, and put themselves on this pedestal. I mean, everybody's looking at looking at all the different moves that's going on right now. You got Jackson State on the cover of uh, Sports Illustrated with Travis Hunter, who decided he'd go flip his uh, commitment from a Power 5 to an HBCU. Who would have ever thought it? Then you come back, then you got Diddy. He's on uh, the BET Awards, and he's talking about, I'm pledging a million dollars to Jackson State, and I pledge a million dollars to Howard University. Well, let me let me preface that. He pledged a million dollars to Jackson State, Coach Prime Deion Sanders' football team. Why not play for us? Those are his words. And then he pledged another million dollars to Howard University. But now we have Ja Rule, who comes back and says, hey, he's going to pledge money to Jackson State University based off of his NFT uh, program, his NFT uh, uh, situation he got going on. So we have to wait and see how all of that goes. And understanding this, look at how you have Bethune Cookman versus Jack State football game moved from Bethune Cookman, Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida. Now you got people saying, man, wait a minute. You got all of this stuff that's happening where you're starting to see teams playing these in these big time in these big time facilities, but you know there's going to be some kickback financially to these institutions. So yes, they're beginning to get that money in order. But from the standpoint of Coach Reed saying, "Hey, let's let's get let's bring uh, Jackson State over to the Big Ten, they're not ready for that as of yet because you already know they're going to be looking for it. They want to check the financials. They want to make sure that you know you have enough of the teams that's going to be able to get out there and compete. You know, in a lot of those sports that they offer, not to mention the, that APR. You already know APR is going to be the key because if your APR is trash, they're going to be on your head. Come hey, man, y'all, y'all need to get it together over there. You know, we we can't have it over here. We we don't want that type of we don't want that type of rhythm happening over here in in the daggone Big Ten. And not to mention a lot of the programs that Coach Prime is already recruiting against, having to compete against when it comes to recruiting. It's going to be even worse now because look at it from the standpoint of you can't, you're, you're lowering the field of athletes that's considering, hey, they might want to come over to Jack State. Now, don't get me wrong. And, and to the flip side of that, who's to say that those athletes might not decide that they want to come to Jackson, Mississippi instead of going to a lot of those uh, Power 5 schools instead and, and you know bring their talents down to Jackson? I mean, anything is possible. But from a financial standpoint, there's nowhere in the world Jackson, Mississippi will be able to deal with traveling from Jackson, Mississippi to California, Jackson, Mississippi, up the East Coast to where, uh, where where's Rutgers? Rutgers or um, Penn State. I think Penn State is the, the furthest program out. So, I mean, what, what are we talking about here? So, I mean, from a financial standpoint, I don't think it's possible for them to do that as of yet. Do I see something like that happening later on down the line? Of course I do. I mean, look at it from this standpoint. What I'm seeing Coach Prime do, well, what he has done, as far as he's been able to lend a helping hand, when, you know, if needed, you know, as far as like Alcorn State with the training situation. Coach Dooley trying to help him get situated with a field. Now, let's look at it from this standpoint. We got all these HBCUs out here that, that's, that's all over the place in these different conferences in which all of them, they're trying to, you know, they're jumping from conference to conference, you know, because of what? Financial stability. When the finance is not right, guess what? They're looking to break wide. There's an article out there where you got the Tennessee State, uh, Tennessee State um, athletic director talking about possibly going up to FBS based on what they're seeing with, uh, was it the, the Ohio Valley Conference? They're not liking what they see over there with them. It's from that conference standpoint. So, I mean, you got people that's looking at trying to get to the FBS le level later on down the line, but financially, it's all about the money. If this money is not coming in like it's supposed to, it's not, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. And it, and for Jackson State to even get in the game, they got to have some major skin in the game. And right now, that skin is them greenbacks. And them greenbacks is not quite there as of yet for them to pay the fees to get in these conferences. So that's another thing you got to look at as well. So... All I'm saying is this. I get what Coach Reed is saying. I mean, I get, I'm get. i I'm, I'm taking it from the standpoint of he wants to see HBCUs go compete on that level. But to be real, 
I mean, let's, let's be real here. Do you really think they want to see us come compete on that level? I was excited about the fact the whole Pac-12 situation. Like, ooh, what, what if, uh, what if, what if, what if the HBCUs go ahead and, uh, you know, try to get over the Pac-12? You know, they doing the realignment over there. How about they go over there? Well, we know that's not gonna happen either. But one thing I could see is super conference for the HBCU program. Get the media rights and everything together. The SWAT can go ahead and build their thing. The MEAC build their thing as far as the media rights that they're trying to get situated. And then once they go from there, then they can come back and renegotiate. I'm staying this past year. Each school in the Big Ten, I believe, got $49 million from the conference. So you know the money is there. So all I'm saying is we got to gotta think smart. We got to work smart, not hard. <clears throat> and right now, I get what Coach Reed is trying to do. Coach Reed is trying to get people to talking, get them thinking on another level. But right now ain't the time for Jack State to try to go to no Big Ten. That's just not going to happen. Because you already know they're going to go through their checklist to make sure – uh, Jack State got everything in place for them to be considered. And then they got to get the votes. And you already know the votes, some of the folks ain't voting for a HBCU to come join that Big Ten Conference. That's just my thoughts. But guys, I'm go ahead and get up on out of here. Hey, y'all leave me your comments below and let me know what you think about all of this. Because again, this, hey, we're seeing some strange things happen right now. And it's, a, it's all about the haves and the have-nots. But Hey, who knows? Like I said, Coach Prime is doing a lot of stuff out here with these programs, trying to help everybody out, get themselves in position to get, you know, get the things that they need and come and also come to Jackson to recruit. So, you, you, I mean, you see what's going on here where he's trying to help everybody elevate themselves. It's not all about just Jackson. Jackson's going to do what they're, Jackson State's going to do what they're going to do, but they're still trying to make sure that everybody else around them elevate because it doesn't make sense for you to sit over here and be like, I got all this, <laughs> get back. You can't get none of this. That's kind of like what's going on right now with a lot of these daggone sport programs that have prevented a lot of these HBCU, HBCU programs from getting a foothold in this game where they should have been a long time ago. But guys, I ain't gonna go ahead and go down that road right now. We'll talk about that another time. But until next time, be the one and lead.